Blizzard just dropped what should be the definitive and final information dump about Classic WoW Season of Mastery a few minutes ago, and things are huge. Meme specs, unfortunately, are not getting any class balance, so it's gonna be a struggle. Dire Maul will be in the game from launch, which will leave in the best gold farm in the game. Tier 0.5 is going to be in the game at launch as well, leaving rogues to have gear that's on par with their AQ sets and more. Let's dive right in, break it all down, and give you all the information right now. Of course, if you want to keep up with any Season of Mastery information, want to see some class guides, leveling guides, and more starting next week, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and let's dive right into the video. We've got some huge information dropped today from Kyvax. So on the blue post, on top of one from yesterday, adjusting on Nixia and some of the actual raid encounters, which we'll get into in a minute, Blizzard is telling us exactly what to expect and what they plan for with this first version of Season of Mastery. So the first things that they're adjusting, obviously, are the raids. They added raid content, making raids harder and taking away world buffs. Today's post, they let us know that they will leave in Dire Maul at the beginning of the game. So you're going to have Dire Maul right away, which is going to break the economy if you're not running it. If you're a hunter or if you're doing Dire Maul East jump runs, you can make insane amounts of gold, not just because you used to sell buffs, but the real original way of gold is just getting static gold from opening up these chests and then selling everything to a vendor. Now in Dire Maul, you can also go in and check what's in the tribute chest without looting the gear and sell that ID or sell those items to people. So right at the beginning of the game, people could get items as good as Trent's Bane, a two-handed axe that's almost as good as Obsidian Edge Blade from Molten Core. Then we're getting gear that's basically on par. These rings, Tarnished Elvis Ring, every rogue, every hunter, maybe even warriors are gonna be going after these and you need two of them. They're not unique. These are massively impactful and you even needed to have these when Dire Maul was released in later phases. Other things that are extremely powerful here are things like the Rod of the Ogre Magi. So there's gonna be gear in the game from launch that is extremely powerful just from Dire Maul alone and there's also going to be incredible gold farms specifically for hunters or classes that can do Dire Maul East jump runs. Now the next thing that they're changing is we're actually going to be changing some of the loot drops. So some of the loot tables from dungeons are going to be the final versions of those loot tables. So there's always newer gear, gear that you probably didn't even know was in the game because at the time of it launching during phase 5 I believe most people weren't really running these dungeons anymore. But one thing that really hurts melee classes is going to be the removal of Hand of Justice from General Anger Forge in Blackrock Depths. This is actually now moved all the way to the final boss, Emperor. So the Emperor boss will drop Hodge, and it does have a pretty decently high drop chance, but this means you need to clear the entire dungeon. You can no longer solo farm Hodge, but we do have these new updated loot tables. Next is going to be the class quest, the level 50 class quests that are released later on in the expansion originally are going to be in from launch. This means you can get some insane items, things like diamond flask, which gives you 75 strength for an entire minute. This is probably one of the most powerful trinkets in the entire game, but other classes also get some pretty insanely powerful items from these. So these are gonna be extremely popular to utilize, and Diamond Flask actually is an item that they didn't change how the healing works here. So if you have healing gear and you pop Diamond Flask, you get a 100% healing coefficient. So say you have a thousand plus healing, which wouldn't happen until max, you're getting some massive plus heals every five seconds. So tanks are definitely gonna be utilizing Diamond Flask sets, which probably hurts you because gear is a lot more scarce in Season of Mastery. Then we've got the big one, the huge one, rogues. Oh, are so excited. The tier 0.5 set. The T0.5 set is out. Oh my God, look at this throwback of one of my videos forever ago. Tier 0.5, the Dark Mantle set is going to be out from launch for all classes, but Dark Mantle for Rogues is literally your BIS. 
tier 0.5 will be bis until late into the aq phases guys so you're gonna want to farm this asap the four piece set bonus is one of the most powerful set bonuses in the entire game in world of warcraft classic now other classes also are going to want to farm these sets because one these sets are powerful stat wise no matter what but also they all have pretty decent set bonuses and because we're having rare loot from raids or not increased loot from raids and shorter amount of time to do these raids, you're all going to want to farm as much pre bis gear as possible. These are all very strong items, so look into what your class set is, but do be aware these class quests were hard when we were in full tier 2 gear. So it's not going to be easy to complete these quests, and it's definitely going to be something terrifying if you're doing hardcore challenge. Moving on, the final things that they're releasing right at the beginning of the game are world PvP and Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds will be out at the very launch of the game, as well as they did talk about how the honor system used to take you 13 weeks in total, 12 weeks of ranking, to make sure that you got rank 14. They have cut that time needed in half, so it'll take you six weeks to get rank 14, but you have to be in bracket one for all of those six weeks. This is an insane time commitment still, and it's basically like having another full-time plus job so good luck to everybody have fun ranking when you do get your ranking gear it will be even more powerful because one you're going to have it earlier and two other people are struggling to get gear from the raids so prepare to be the most powerful person on the server pretty much but know that it is going to be extremely competitive this go around lastly past that they did talk about class changes and class balance. Now, a lot of us were looking forward to basically doing these new raids as a new class to see how they were. And a lot of people are talking about how good rogues and warriors are gonna be. And rogues, again, are getting an insane buff with the tier 0.5. But these new mechanics in the raids are very melee unfriendly, if that's the right terminology. And so balanced raids have been doing better in pug scenarios. Now, Blizzard did say that they saw some people go in with warrior and rogue stacks and struggle more than they saw with actually balanced raids. So they're not making actual class balances, which means you are gonna struggle with mana on these longer fights, but they do plan on increasing the herbalism nodes even more so that you can get your consent consumables, farm up your mana pots, and basically chain pop those, as well as Black Lotus will drop randomly off of some high level herbalism nodes. So with the classes and everything hanging in the balance, how do things look right now with some of the new raid encounters that are very not friendly to melee and the melee on the PTR, well, everyone kind of has some pretty bad gear. Here on the right side of the screen is a shot from Stay Safe stream earlier today where his pug group went in and actually cleared Onyxia with the new mechanics. There's two new drakes that Onyxia has, but the ads that she summons every like 40 seconds don't do an AOE mechanic anymore. So it's actually kind of an easier fight but at the beginning of this raid at the beginning of the boss encounter warriors and rogues were about 300 dps above any other class and then you have the long air phase where mages and hunters caught up and then towards the end with the long execute phases warriors again were able to take over on the meters this is definitely going to be indicative to be honest of what raids are going to be like but it will be useful extremely useful to have a good balance in your raids because during the air phases or a lot of times when melee can't dps a boss you need everybody else to do the damage regardless warriors still do the most damage in world of warcraft classic but i honestly think with the tier 0.5 set out at launch rogues for the first half of this expansion are by far going to be the highest single target dps Either way, guys, you can pretty much play any class in Season of Mastery, especially any of the main ones. Warlocks and Mages are going to be really useful as well as Hunters. Meme Specs are getting hurt because they are not getting buffed and these longer fights are going to be a little rough for them. This should be a ton of fun and I'm really, really excited. If you guys want to see more, of course, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'm going to be coming out with some leveling guides as well as some PvE guides starting next week. But if you want to get a step ahead now, make sure that you pre-order yourself 
yourself the Reset XP guide, or make sure you download and set up all of your weak auras or UI and everything else. But guides like the Reset XP guide will literally tell you exactly where to go, exactly which quests to do with this 40% XP boost to get to level 60 as fast as possible. It is designed by the best speed runners or the best speed levelers in the entire game. Anyways, if you want to get a discount on that, make sure to click a link in the description and I will see you guys all out there next week. Good luck and let's have a blast.